Have you ever thought to yourself, I'd really love to go to Hopton Heath Railway Station in Shropshire? Well, me neither. That is, of course, until I found out that just up the road is a little hamlet called Hopton Castle. And I thought, well, there must be a castle there somewhere. Let's go and explore it and see what it's like. So today I'm taking the train from Shrewsbury Railway Station down to Hopton Heath. It's a request stop, so I'll have to tell the guard where I want to get off. And I'm going to go and have a look. So why don't you come with me for the ride? Hope it's a good one. Let's make a trip and cheers for now. Hopton Heath is located on the Heart of Wales Line, which runs from Shrewsbury to Swansea, currently four times a day in the week, and just half that number on a Sunday. The line is exclusively served by Transport for Wales, who normally use their older units, such as this two-car Class 150, which would be my train this morning. Obviously it looks a little bit worn on the outside and is yet to receive the newer red and white Transport for Wales livery but the inside has been refurbished and it's got USB and power. It's definitely essential if you're going to be doing the four hours plus journey all the way down to Swansea. Now unfortunately this is not possible at the moment as the line is still closed at Tlangenek following a freight train derailment uh, much earlier in 2020. A rail replacement bus service does remain in operation if you're still determined enough to do it. And if you've travelled on the Heart of Wales Line, I'd be really interested to hear of your experiences in the comments below. It's about 40 minutes down to Hopton Heath from Shrewsbury. The conductor did come down the train to ask where we were all getting off, and it didn't take long, incidentally. There were only five people on the train. I like the fact that they've made ample provision for cycles, um, which is good to see, and it's certainly a brilliant way to explore the many stations and scenic countryside of this, what is a very rural part of the UK. Now, after leaving Craven Arms, we branch off from the Cardiff main line onto the single track line, and thus begin the slow trek southwest towards our destination.
guys, I'm Hopton Heath. Just got off the train, it's very quiet, but a nice little station nevertheless. It's uh, got its own station building. Can you see that behind me? Looks like somebody lives there. Uh, and a little waiting room, and a bridge, and one or two other things. Very short platform though, I'm glad I sat on the second of the two carriages. And the train now has just gone off to Knighton, which is as far as it goes today. There's engineering work taking place from Knighton all the way down to Swansea. That's been ongoing for a while. And uh, so unfortunately, it's a bus replacement service if you want to travel any further than Knighton today. Well, I certainly don't. I'm going to go and have a look for the castle in a minute. So why don't you come with me and um, I'll see you when I get there. Uh, looking past the poorly spelt signage, you can actually see that the platform it did continue underneath the bridge and, and beyond probably twice the size as it is today I would imagine. I like Topton Heath station, it had that real country station feel to it. You can imagine back in the days of steam when, as you can quite clearly see from the map and the bridge, that it was a double track with two platforms. It even had a couple of sidings and its own goods shed to the south of the station. And not much remains of this now, unfortunately. Access egress from the station is via this very modern staircase which leads onto the road crossing the line and it is from this point that we start to begin our quest to find the castle. Okay you guys, I've just left Hopton Heath Railway Station and I'm walking down the lane towards Hopton Castle. There's actually a sign in the waiting room at the station telling you about the castle and which way to go. So it looks reasonably significant in terms of uh, the, the structure of the building. It's probably the old keep, I would imagine. Anyway, we're going to have a look. I've got to be back here in about an hour's time, so I'll take a bit more footage of the castle, hopefully, and um, I'll see you in a bit. Cheers for now. I saw the wonderful sight of two red kites on the way to Hopton Castle, a species of bird that has thankfully become much more prevalent in this part of the world over recent years. Now on the way you can either follow the lane all the way down or you could take a shortcut over the fields. It depends on the weather really to a certain extent. And look out for these public footpath signs with the very attractive Heart of Wales design of a train crossing a viaduct. And now once I'd reached Topton Castle, I must to my surprise and delight, what greeted me was an unexpectedly sizeable ancient monument. It has been lovingly conserved into what we see here today by the Hopton Castle Preservation Trust and I've popped a link to their website in the description to this video. Our admission was free, as was this very detailed leaflet giving you lots of information about the history of the castle much of which I have used to tell you about in the next couple of minutes. Now, first of all, I should say that it's not actually a castle at all. It's technically a medieval tower house, which was built in the early 1300s on the site of a former Norman Mott and Bailey castle. I learned that the tower was besieged by royalists for around five weeks back in 1644. Now I have to think in they had possibly negotiated their lives, the parliamentarians inside eventually surrendered. However, they were spared no mercy, quarter, and most were brutally murdered on the spot. Now this tragic event was later referred to as the Hopton Quarter and became a byword for treacherous treatment by your opponents. And I think if anyone who currently follows politics in the UK can probably relate to that one. <laughs> Anyway, 
It was fascinating wandering around the tower and I really did have it all to myself. It was easy to imagine how it must have looked. A two story accommodation with turrets in each corner, grand four poster beds upstairs, whilst below a pig would be spit roasted over a roaring fire. You know, the usual castle imagery that these visits conjure up. I did wonder, incidentally, what kind of roof it would have had. If anyone's an expert on these kind of things, I'm certainly not. Please let me know in the comments below. Oh, it's soon time to leave, and I headed back down the external steps to start the walk back to the station. All in all, it was certainly a fascinating visit and definitely worth the trip. Okay guys, well I'm back at Hopton Heath Railway Station. That was really good actually. I wasn't expecting to find much, maybe a grassy mound with some old stones on top and placed around it. But it was actually um, a really well preserved keep and with lots of fascinating information inside. I would definitely recommend it. <laughs> so yeah, really enjoyed that. Now I'm waiting for the train back to Shrewsbury. I'm a bit concerned because when I walked down the steps to the station, there was a sign saying, trains don't stop at this station until further notice. So <laughs> I was sold the ticket at Shrewsbury. So I'm hoping to flag it down. So let's see how it goes. But thanks for watching anyway, regardless of what happens to me for the rest of this journey. I hope you've enjoyed the video and please subscribe if you like it. And I will see you on another one soon. Cheers for now.